discovered a type of forest zebra. The natives who lived in the forest though knew the animal. They called it an okapi. If you look for the okapis that live in the forest down below, you two just might think they're related to a zebra. But like those explorers, you two would be wrong. Because it turns out the okapi is not related to the zebra at all. Believe it or not, we're actually looking at the only living relative of the giraffe. Maybe you can see a resemblance to the giraffe in the shape of their head, sloping hindquarters, and just like giraffes, they have a prehensile tongue. Prehensile means grasping, and they use their tongue just like we use our fingers. They can pick things up with it. In fact, their tongue is so long that the okapi is the only animal to clean out its own ears with its tongue. Oh, both the okapi we see today, those are girls, boys, actually a little bit smaller than the girls. Like giraffes, they have two little horns on their head. But we're going to head north out of that forest. We're going to begin to climb, and as we do, we'll be heading into the highlands of Ethiopia, the rooftops of Africa. Now, Africa is slowly being ripped apart. There's a gigantic tear down the middle of the continent that we call the Great Rift Valley. It's where you find the mountains and volcanoes. And up in the northern part of the Rift Valley, we'll find the Nubian Ibex. It's a type of wild mountain goat. And we'll find a whole herd of them here on this mountain. In fact, one of the first ones I see is an adult female. The female has slender, slightly curved horns, but if you look behind her, you'll see one of the big males. Actually, you see two of the big males that live here. The males have the really impressive horns, and their horns will get up to about four feet long. They can nearly make a complete circle all the way around their head. They even headbutt each other way. So figure out who's in charge of the mountain battle. Oh, yeah, that one way back now, there. Now, for lucky, we might spot some of the babies that live here. There are five babies here. Actually, I see one over to the far right, kind of up Aww. high. It's called the baby kids. And from the littlest kid to the biggest male, they are all excellent climbers. They climb all over the mountain. You can see a few of them up in a tree, which is kind of an odd place to find a goat. This is great, having this camera. But we're going to travel down the Rift Valley for a little while. And our next stop will be on the slopes of the second tallest mountain in Africa. It's Mount Kenya. It's an extinct volcano, and it's located, oddly enough, in the country of Kenya. So on the slopes of that mountain, we'll find a forest. And living deep in that forest is an elusive animal called the East African Bongo. They're the largest of all the forest antelopes. And typically, the animals that live in the forest are dark colored. Kind of like the Ogopi we saw a moment ago. But the Bongo is the exception to that rule because Bongos are bright orange. So you think they stick out like a sore thumb in the forest, but actually a perfect camouflage. Oh, yeah, I see them. The stripes on their side. Just like the stripes on the okapi are like sort of patches of sunlight that occasionally make it to the canopy and leaves of the forest oh, wow. to the floor. Now the two bongos we see on the forest floor are both females. The males and females both have those long spiral horns. But unlike most other antelopes, their horns point backward. That way they can lower their head down, those horns will be flat against their back, and they won't get caught in any of the undergrowth they run through. Unfortunately, though, the East African bongo is very endangered. And a few years ago, zoos realized how endangered they really are. Decided it was time to do something to help. So, in 2005, they gathered up 18 bongos that were living around the country, and they shipped them back to Kenya. It's been five years since they've done that, and in those five years, the numbers have begun to grow, and eventually, they're going to be able to repopulate the entire area where those bongos used to live. Nice. All thanks to animals born in zoos. And zoos have lots of programs like that in place. In a little bit, we'll see some animals that we're trying to reintroduce back into North Africa. We also have captive breeding programs where we have babies born at the zoo. So the baby I actually might see another baby or two as we go along. And there's a lot of research and study that goes on at the zoo. In fact, right here at the Dallas Zoo, more study has been done on the old copy than just about anywhere else in the world. But all the animals that we've seen so far today are what you can call a prey animal. Oh. Those are animals that look, occasionally look, look, look get eaten there. by another animal. But coming up, we're going to be on the lookout for our first I've never seen predators. anything like that. Me neither. Predators are the animals that do the eating. Oh, and we're going to be looking for a couple of cats. Let's we'll see if we can find them up ahead. Oh, a few of them. I'm going to look over to the right. About midway up, you'll see a cat called a caracal. And the name caracal means black ear in Turkish. So you can probably see where they get that name. It's that long tuft of black hair on the ear. 
No, the Caracal can't take down an analyst. Oh it's a bongo. They are right specialists there. in hunting right there, birds. Whoa. Got that? Whoa. Grab some jumpers. Hey, jump up to eight feet into the air and catch those birds mid-flight. Oh, I see. Wow, I guess birds. Also, there's a very easy way to tell if an animal is a predator or a prey. Take a look at their eyes. Okay. If the eyes are on the front of the face and look forward, it's probably a predator. Really? Yeah, but if the eyes are on the side of the head and look out, it's probably a prey animal. So I want you to take a very good look at your neighbor. Neat. Are their eyes on the front of the face? Or are they on the side of the head? My Your predators. But we're going to travel even further down the Rift Valley. We're going to head all the way to Central Africa. And here, we're going to be on the search for the headwaters of the Nile River. Ooh. And the Nile starts off in Central Africa. But as it flows north, it gathers into bigger and bigger streams than it yeah, eventually it out, it becomes the longest it. river on the planet. It's over 4,000 miles long, wow. oh. longer than the United States is wow. long. And it's one of the most important rivers in human history. Wow. It's the Egyptians built their entire yeah. civilization around the Nile. Yeah. And around this part of the river, we'll find a lot of birds. In fact, at the top of the waterfall, we'll find a flock of white pelicans. Pelicans are fish-eating birds. They're underneath their long tail is a towel. It's called a gular. And a gular can hold up to three gallons of water in it. So scoop up the water. Any fish they find, drain out the water and swallow the fish. Now, near those pelicans, you find a large nest. The pelicans didn't build that nest. It was built by a pair of white storks. So we might be able to see those storks here in a little bit. They've been hanging out a little bit further upstream today. Every nine months, though, the storks that built that nest will migrate in between Europe and Africa. Oh. From that nine-month migration pattern, we get the myth that storks... Oh, here you think. Yeah. Now, up ahead on an island, if you look on the other side of the island, by the second stream, you might find two blackbirds okay. up on a fallen log, each one of them. They have white feathers on their throats. Those are white-breasted cormorants. And cormorants are diving birds. They dive deep underwater to catch their fish. Now, any bird that eats fish has to swallow the fish whole and head first. If they swallow the fish tail first, the scales are really caught in their throat. They choke. And they have to swallow the fish whole because birds don't chew their food. Because birds don't have teeth that they can't. Up ahead, though, I see this waterfall. Look! It's like we're going to have to go through the waterfall, so I hope everyone doesn't mind getting just a little bit wet. Yes. Sahara Desert, one of the driest places on the planet. 
You think of a desert, you probably think of a hot, dry, sandy area, and that's the Sahara. And we're heading deep into the Sahara, and here we'll find three different kinds of antelope. First one we'll see here is a large 